Hey guys, I got a little repair I did on the American Pacemaker at work. One of the jaws on the steady rest needed a little bit of help there. What you see is the little knob, the little hand wheel in the shaft. It's got some messed up threads and then the finger itself, the jaw, has got some bad threads on the inside there. And those, those threads, by the way, are 5 8 11 left-handed. So what I had to do, I, I bought a, a, a Walton uh, tap extender and I had to modify it so it could fit down inside the hole so I could run that tap all the way through that block and clean those threads out. So I bought a 5 8 11 left hand tap and one of those Walton uh, tap extenders and I'm turning it, turning it down there so that I can fit it down inside of the, um, I believe it's 17 30 seconds hole and just chase the threads, clean them up. And I, I had enough meat there, it held the tap and, and I'm just showing there it fits down inside the tapped hole now. So there it is in the vise. I got the tap in the hole and I'm now I'm using the tap extender. And we're going to run that tap all the way down there and clean those threads up. And it worked great. So this next picture, I didn't take any video of it, but that's the little hand wheel that I made out of some 2-inch aluminum. Replaced the old one. And then this is a piece of 4140, and this is going to be the shaft that I'm that I'm replacing. I'm turning the uh, five eighths in there now, and uh, that's the first end that's turned and threaded. It'll be threaded for a left hand, and then flipped around and and turned the end that fits through the steady rest and has a little hand wheel on it. And then here's a picture of the hand wheel fitted on it. All I had to do is just drill it and put a pin through there to hold it together. And then this last picture is, uh, you know, a, a fit up to make sure everything worked right. So I decided to just go ahead and do a voiceover for this part. This is going to be the video of doing the left-handed threading for this little pin here. There's just a shot of what we're doing. We're uh, machining a left, or I'm sorry, a, a, an 11 pitch, 5 8 11 left hand. And I'm just going to kind of talk you through what I'm doing here. We've got the compound swung to the left side. I'm using a left-handed threading tool. And let's see. Make sure that your, uh, your feed direction is from left to right. And on your um, threading dial, I'm going to be hitting every other number. So I'm going to hit 1, 3, 5, and 7 on that dial there. And doing an odd pitch just makes it a little bit easier to remember that. Just hit your odd numbers since you're doing an odd pitch. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up and make a light scratch pass to check our pitch and make sure that we do have the machine set on an 11 pitch. Just notice that left hand threading tool there. That's actually my, my personal tool that I brought in to use for this job. So we're going to check our pitch, make sure that we're correct, and we're good. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, that's our depth, we're going to go 68 thousandths and feed on the compound set at 60 degrees. What I'm going to show you here is I'm going to double check my odd numbers on the threading dial. 1357. I'm going to go ahead and gauge it on a couple more there just to prove that every other number will engage right. So you can use 135 or 7, depending on where you start. So I started on an, on an odd number. Use a little bit of thread cutting oil there. And first pass I usually take about 20 thousandths. Second pass I usually take another 20 thousandths and then kind of back off from there.
So we're covering up on our real close to our final depths there. And I always stop a little bit shy and start checking it with a uh, with a thread gauge or a nut or something like that. I don't want to cut it too deep, even though we, we know we want about 68,000. So I usually stop a little bit before that and clean the threads. I actually bought a pack of uh, 5 8 11 left hand nuts just so I'd have a, a little gauge to check it with and that's what I'm going to do is uh, try it on there and see if it fits knowing that it's probably going to be too tight and you can see there it's a little too tight so I know I got to take a few more thousands clean the tip off the uh, center before you stick it back in Take a couple more thousands. Right there, that's just going to be a spring pass just to clean it up. Make a spring pass and then we'll, we'll check it again with our, with our nut. File the tops of the threads off. Just removes the little burrs that roll up whenever your, your tool is doing the threading. File the end off. It usually rolls a little burr over on the end. And no reason why, like an air hose, blow the chips off out of the way. Do another check, and I, I believe I'm still a little bit tight here. I'm not quite to the, uh, the proper depth that I want to be. You can see it's trying to go on there, but it's 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 still too tight. So we got to take a couple more. There you can see I want 68, and we're only at 65. So I'm going to dial in and take a couple more thousandths, make one more pass through here. I'm going to go ahead and do another light file of the thread. Just make sure there's no, no additional burrs there from that last pass. Touch the end of it there. And we'll clean it off and we're going we're gonna to check the nut again. And that last pass right there took me to the depth that I wanted to go off of my chart there. So I'm trying the nut and... I could feel right there when it started that I had a little chip or something inside the nut, so I was blowing it out, and we tried again, and this time we we hit our mark. So it's going on there really good. I know it's going to go all the way up to that shoulder like it's supposed to. That's why I like to have a, a good nut there to use as a as a gauge whenever I'm doing my threading. So now I'm going to grab the block and I've already tapped the hole, cleaned the threads up all the way through it. And we're going to give it a shot. All right, once I got almost all the way on there, it started getting tight on me, a little bit too snug. And that's something that can happen sometimes when you're, when you're threading something really deep into a part. So... I didn't film it, but what I did was I brought the tool back in and I dialed in like a half a thousandths on the uh, compound. That plus the little bit of a spring pass additional with it actually cut it to the proper depth where I could screw that block all the way on there. So um, we're going to go ahead and get to that part now. So this was after my little half thousand spring pass that I made. And you can see that it screws all the way up to the shoulder quite nicely and worked out great.
All right, there it is installed. New rod, new hand wheel that I made. That's the jaw there, the arm, whatever. It's gonna slide down to catch. I got it cleaned. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of, just a little bit of whey oil. Okay. Fitting good, just like it's supposed to here. All right, we got a touchdown. Here's a quick little shot of that four inch face mill that I use at work that I was posting on Facebook that the guys kept asking me about. This is a little block that I was making to, um, as a parallel block to go with the, the Kurt Vice there. And I was just taking a 20,000 step to cut, 15 inch per minute feed rate. That thing does a good job. So I got tired of using, you know, stacked blocks and wedges and things like that. And that's why I had this piece of flat bar, this 3 by 8 flat bar. And I decided to use it to make this little parallel block. That's what I call it anyway. And you see what it does. It just holds your stock up parallel with the vise. You can just set the part down on there and you know that it's nice and level. And that's just for doing rinse flats or whatever else I might need it for. So I just thought I would throw that in there and share it with you guys also. These last couple pictures I want to share with you is the first cylinder that Gil has machined on his little Monarch 10 EE for the little engine that he's building. And he, he showed, he sent these two pictures to me and I thought they looked pretty good, so I want to go ahead and throw them in S&S for you. Hope you don't mind, Gil. Cylinder's looking great, man.